Hi, welcome to The Art of Yoga with Cat Justice. And this is going to be a yoga video based around creating um, and cultivating more core strength. So um, before we start this, I would like to give a little my two cents about what core strength really is and what it isn't. So core strength does not actually have anything to do with having a flat belly or having a six pack. So that six pack muscle, the rectus abdominis, is actually not a very integral part of our core. The core muscles that we really need to support our body are deeper abdominal muscles, they're deeper muscles in our lower back, they are muscles through our pelvic floor. So they're this deeper set of muscles that don't have that sort of, um, they don't look like a six pack, they don't have that. So it's less about what our body looks like from the outside and more about what we can do with our body from the inside out. Um, also core strength by nature is our ability to stabilize our trunk and to stabilize our body while we move our arms and legs. So um, some other kind of traditional yoga poses that people think of as core poses, I'm not as much a fan of. So you'll notice in the sequence, there's no boat pose. Um, boat pose tends to tighten and strengthen the hip flexor muscles, which for most of us, if we do too much sitting throughout the day, they are already tight and they're already too strong. Um, so that doesn't often help our core very much to strengthen the hip flexors. Um, but that said, we're going to work on how to open the shoulders, how to open the hips and do those movements, but yet still have a really strong, steady um, core or steady trunk while we do it. Um, and that's what's going to help us keep our back healthy. It's going to help us be able to lift and move safely with less pain and feel just really awesome and strong inside our body. Um, so we have helping us today my little assistant of Lotus and also um, just out of the picture is my baby Arden and he might make an appearance, you never know, he might decide to um, come in and show off his core. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might, you can come on in. <laughs> um, so that's the, uh, the nature of a um, mother of children and cats and what it, um, how we get our yoga practice in. So uh, bear with me. So let's get started by coming onto our backs. So starting on our backs, you can have your knees bent, uh, feet flat, but a little feet a little wider apart than your hips, and then let your knees drop together so that your hips and your legs can relax. From here, go ahead and take your hands to your belly. And as you rest on your back here, close your eyes and just feel the softness in your belly. Allow your belly to be soft. Feeling your breath dropping down into the belly so that as you inhale, there's just this gentle rise to the belly. As you exhale, a gentle falling back down. And for our core, for our belly and that part of our core to be truly strong, we need to be able to relax those muscles. So a muscle can't be strong if it's tense and it's tight all the time. It gets tired, it gets depleted. So really allowing the belly to feel this softness, this natural softness to the belly it also helps us to get out of that mindset of feeling like we have to tuck our belly in or hold it in or kind of get into that sort of mindset of shame or, um, yeah, of having to withhold kind of our natural softness to our belly. And as you breathe here, let your back relax as well. And then you could open your eyes and separate your knees, bring your feet in so that they're more closer to hip distance apart. And we're going to move through some very gentle pelvic tilts or pelvic rocking. So you can take your hands to your hips if that helps you to feel the motion. But as you inhale, <laughs> it's going to be hard to see with that kitty in the way. As you inhale, you're going to let your hips tip forward. And as you exhale, you're going to let them tip back. So you can inhale, rock forward. And exhale, rock back, like you've got a little rolling pin at your hips. Inhale, rock it forward, feel the belly expand and open. Exhale, let it rock back down. Feel your belly button gently press towards your spine. Inhaling as the pelvis rocks forward, and exhaling as it rocks back. And just feeling the comfortable extremes of your motion. So you don't have to go to the full range. If there's pain, back off. Really what we're just feeling is the ability for those core muscles to engage and draw the belly in. And then we're asking those same muscles to let go as your back arches. 
maybe even adding in a mula bandha or a lift from the pelvic floor, and then letting it go as you inhale and rock forward. And then from here, you can go ahead and now we're going to kind of zoom in on our neutral spine. So as you rock forward and back, maybe just finding now that neutral place, that halfway point, so that we're not totally arched, we're not totally flat. So imagine like a little tunnel underneath the lower back. And then from here, you're going to draw your belly button towards your spine, engaging that transverse abdominus and those lower abdominal muscles. And we're going to do it isometrically, which means we're just going to hold our body still. So we find that little arch to the lower back, maybe even slide your hands under and feel that arch. And then we're going to hold it there as we engage those core muscles. At the same time, relax the neck, the jaw, the shoulders. And if you want, you can keep your hands under your lower back or you can move them behind your head. If they're behind your head, now you can kind of feel if your neck muscles are overworking, try and keep them nice and relaxed. So as we maintain that neutral spine and that engagement through the belly, we're just gonna inhale and lift the right foot up off the floor and then exhale lower back down. And then the left side, inhale to lift and exhale to lower. So just marching the feet in place. And what we're focusing on is not what the legs are doing, that's not hard. What we're focusing on is what our core is doing, because that's where the challenge is, is being able to hold the body steady while you march the legs. And for some of us, this is plenty. This is a really advanced exercise right here to be able to find that stability while you move the legs. But if you would like a little bit more challenge, you can see what it feels like to lift up and then maybe reach through the leg and then come back and lower down. Moving with the breath, like you'll inhale, lift, exhale, reach. Inhale back and exhale lower or just stay with that marching. Either way, we're focusing on keeping the back neutral, keeping those belly muscles engaged, and keeping the neck and shoulders nice and light and relaxed. Inhale, lift, exhale, reach, inhale back and exhale down. And you can stay with this or maybe seeing what it feels like to take it one level even beyond this where you raise both feet up and then you're gonna exhale, reach, inhale back to center, exhale, reach, and inhale back to center. But the whole time we're focusing on drawing the belly in, on maintaining that little hint of a curve to the lower back, so not letting the back roll through those pelvic tilts and thus, not letting it arch, not letting it flatten, but holding strong. And again, if you're not sure if you're doing it, you can always slide your hands under your lower back and feel if there's any movement there. Then just back off a step, bring the feet back down. And then regardless of where you are, go ahead, hug your knees and gently rock side to side. Giving the belly, the legs a little hug, let everything soften. And then from here, we're going to roll up and down from bridge. So now you can plant your feet, bring your arms at your sides. And we're going to inhale and scoop the tailbone under and vertebra by vertebra rolling up the spine. Inhaling to lift up and then exhaling to lower down. Rolling through. Inhale as you roll up and exhaling as you roll down. I'm trying to think of the spine like curls on a string. Oh, we've got a baby who wants to join us. Rising on the inhale and lowering on the exhale. And just working that ability to control the spine. Hi. <laughs> if you feel like part of the back comes down, not like individual little vertebrae, but in a chunk, just slow it down in that spot and get as much control as you can. And then from here, once again, go ahead, hug the knees into your chest and rock side to side. And then you can roll all the way over and come on up to hands and knees. Hi. <laughs> Mommy funny. And then from here, you're going to spread your fingers and feel the whole palm of the hand engage with the earth. And we'll move through cat and cow. So you can exhale, gently round through the back, drop the head, push the floor away. Inhale, gently arch, draw the shoulders away from your ears. Flowing through with the breath, exhaling to round, and inhaling to arch. Following your breath, just feeling again that ability to control what your back is doing.
kind of like the pelvic tilts, but we're just doing it with the whole back. And then coming back to neutral. And then from here, now we're going to find a neutral spine again. So you can tuck your toes under. And just like after we did the pelvic tilts, then we worked on holding the back steady. So now after cat and cow, we're going to do the same thing. So you keep your back relatively flat and we're going to exhale and shift the weight back. And notice how as you shift back to keep the back flat, you've got to kind of lift the tailbone and draw deeper into the hips and then inhale, come forward. So we're just going to do a little bit of rocking motion, exhale, rocking back and inhale, coming forward. And just feeling in order to maintain that neutral spine, don't let the back round, keep it flat, how your core needs to start working. You need to start working from the belly, from the thighs, maybe even engage the Mula Bandha. Lift the pelvic floor, inhale, coming forward, and exhale, drawing into your core. From here, maybe even float the knees. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, draw back, maybe float the knees. Maybe just think the knees to float. They don't actually have to lift. Exhale, draw back. And this is eventually going to take us into downward facing dog. But instead of just pushing through the arms, we're going to draw deep through the hips, deep into the core, keep the hips moving back as you lift up into downward facing dog. So we're moving through the legs, not just pushing with the arms. From there, let the head relax. Maybe walk the feet in place if that feels good to just loosen up down dog, let the head go. But again, think of down dog as core. Think of drawing the weight off the arms, use the legs. And then from here, we'll come forward into a plank. From plank, bringing the hands right, or the shoulders right under your hand, over your hands. Bring the body into a nice incline. Reach through the heels and lift through your thighs, but don't lift the hips. So the hips stay lined up with the body. But think about using your legs and your belly as much, if not more, than you use your arms. Breathing here. And then we're going to slowly lower knees, chest, and chin to the earth. And we're going to inhale for cobra. With cobra, press through the feet, pull with the hands, feel length in the spine. Shoulders away from the ears. We're now engaging some deep core muscles in our shoulder blades. So we're not pushing, we're pulling. From there, the challenge to come out of Cobra using our core is to try and lift the shoulders and the hips together. So you're gonna press your knees into the earth, tuck the elbows to your sides, keep pulling with the arms, and lift the hips and the shoulders in one piece. Or if you can't, get the hips up as soon as they can get off the ground. And then exhale, child's pose. Breathing into the back, we're going to move through that again. Tuck the toes, lift up, draw the hips back, use your core to come into down dog. Inhale, come forward for plank, engage the legs, engage the belly. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cobra. And exhale, soften, elbows at the sides. Inhale, lift from the hips, rise it up. Exhale, downward facing dog, pull back from the hips. Inhale for plank. Exhale for a challenge, challenge, let knees, chest, and chin come down in one piece. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, soften. Inhale, lift from the hips. And exhale, downward facing dog. On an inhale, reach the right heel to the sky, and then exhale, stepping forward, we'll rise up for warrior one. Bending through the front knee until you can just see the big toe to the inside of the knee. Ground through the four corners of your feet and feel that engagement of your core starting at the arches of your feet. Feel that lift through the arches and feel how that wakes up that deep inner core structure throughout the whole body. From here, exhale, take the hands to the hips. You're going to uh, bring your body slightly forward so that your, the rest of your body lines up with the back leg. Draw the belly in. Feel that deep core engagement to support your spine. And we're going to lift off into a Virabhadrasana 3, Warrior 3. Shift the weight forward. You can stay where you are or you can rise up. Keep the hips squared off to the earth. 
Left hip lowers, right hip raises slightly. Use the belly to support the pose. From here, inhale, draw that left knee up into the chest. Find a balance moment. Exhale, place it down for Tadasana, bringing the feet to touch. Again, feel your core wake up from the arches of the feet lifting all the way up through the groins, through the inner body. Inhale, circle the arms. And exhale, hands to the hips. From here, shift the weight to the left foot and take the right leg into warrior three. Feel the belly engage. And we're slowly going to step back for warrior one. Inhale, rise up through the arms. Once again, bend the front leg, find the big toe to the inside of the knee, lifting from the arches. And exhale, downward facing dog. Go ahead, lift through the left leg. Get that half down dog moment. And then lower both feet down. Relax through the head, the neck. Inhale, plank. You can stay with knees, chest, and chin and cobra, or if you prefer, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Pull from the hips. Inhale, the right leg lifts to the sky for down dog splits. Let the hip open. And then exhale, step forward for warrior two. Inhale, rise it up. Soften the shoulders. Again, lift from the arches of the feet, lift from the pelvic floor. Feel the belly just gently engage and the neck and shoulders nice and relaxed. Right palm flips, inhale, reverse warrior. And exhale, downward facing dog. Taking the other side, inhale, left leg for down dog splits, open through the hip. Exhale to step. Warrior two, lining up heel to arch. Inhale, rise it up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Knees, chest, and chin, or exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. And lowering to your knees. From here, go ahead and bring the elbows to the earth for dolphin pose. Elbows come in a little more narrow than your shoulders. Wrap the hands all the way around, then interlace the hands and let the elbows roll open so now they're right under your shoulders. From here, you're going to lift through the hips and drop the head. And you can stay here in dolphin pose or if it feels comfortable, you can walk the legs back and find a dolphin plank. From here, we're again working kind of those core muscles in the shoulder as well as in the belly. Create length from your heels to the crown of the head. And you can hang out here and breathe or you can exhale, dip the right hip down. Inhale back up, exhale, dip the left hip down. Inhale to lift, exhale to dip. Take it once more to each side. If you need a break, just take your knees to the earth. Coming back up to neutral. And now let's work through the legs. Inhale, right foot floats. Exhale, back down. Inhale, left leg floats. Exhale, back down. Twice more to each side. If your arms or shoulders start to overwork, think how can you use your legs, how can you use your belly to support them? And then from there, lower to the knees and walk it back to child's pose. In child's pose, breathe into the back, let the shoulders soften. And then once again, coming back into downward facing dog. Feel the belly engage, draw the weight off the arms. Exhale, lower to the knees. Once again, we're going to come down onto our forearms, only this time 
we're not going to interlace the hands. Keep the hands apart. And then once again, walk the feet back into that forearm plank. From here, go ahead and roll your body onto the right side. Maybe stacking the feet. If this is too intense, keep the left foot on the floor. Either way, we're going to lift from the bottom side of the waist. Feel again the belly drawing in. You can have the hand on the hip, or you can reach it up, or you can reach it up and over. Breathing here. Feeling the support come from the core, from the belly, from the hips. And exhale, coming back down onto the forearms. We'll take same thing to the other side. Rolling onto that left foot, stack the feet, and lift up, hand to the hip, straight up, up and over. Or you can take that top foot and press it into the earth for more support. Either way, we're feeling that lift coming from the bottom side of the waist, lifting upward, stacking the hips. And then exhale, child's pose. Take to the knees and let it rest back. From here, go ahead and roll back onto your back. Hug the knees in. Give your back a little massage. And now we're going to come back into bridge pose. So now you can ground through the feet, bring the arms down at your sides, and this time we're going to hold the pose. So you're going to roll up through the spine, vertebra by vertebra, rising up. Once you reach the top, maybe it feels good to kind of scooch the shoulders under a little and interlace the hands, lifting from here. Maybe it feels better just to leave the hands apart and just press through the pinky side of the arm. Either way, wherever you're at, we're going to see what it feels like to lift the right foot up off the floor. Breathing there. And exhale, release everything and roll it down. Way easier <laughs> to, it uh, looks easier than it is. It's very advanced. So if lifting the foot doesn't feel good, go ahead and just imagine that you're lifting it. Just see what it would feel like to imagine to lift it and your muscles will still engage. So as you're ready, we'll take the other side. You're going to roll on up, vertebra by vertebra. Again, the arms can stay at your sides or they can interlace, either one. I'll show it with the arms at the sides this time. Press through the pinky side of the arm, ground through the right foot, and float the left. Notice if your left hip is dropping, see if you can lift it, keep it level with the right. Relax the jaw, the shoulders, and then release it down. Once you come down, we'll move into happy baby. You can take hold behind the knees or to the outer edges of the feet. From there, you're gonna press your lower back into the floor, engage the mula bandha, lift the pelvic floor, and just gently draw your knees down while at the same time pressing your lower back into the earth. This is a great core strengthener. It's another isometric. We're not moving the body, but we're engaging the muscles to support the body. Breathing here. Your diaphragm muscle is kind of like the roof of this core structure, that we've got all these muscles in kind of three dimension that create this little box around the belly. And then we want to keep the lid of the box, the diaphragm muscle, nice and soft. And then gently release the legs. From here, as you take the feet down, go ahead, lift your hips up and scoot them to the right one little step. From there, lift the feet, engage the belly. Again, think belly button to spine. And as we move into the twist, we're gonna try and now kind of keep the lower back in one piece. Keep it supported from the belly and feel the twist moving more up into the rib cage, into the mid back. As you take the legs to the left and let the arms open out, you can turn your head left, right, or anywhere in between. And now just again, coming back to that idea of letting your belly soften. Feeling the breath dropping down into the belly, into the lower back. After we've done that deep strength work, it's really important to take this time to let the belly soften and stretch and open so that we don't create tension in the muscle. We want strength, not tension. Tension is kind of that contraction that doesn't know how to let go. Strength is that contraction that knows how to be there to support you and then knows how to let go when it's not needed. From here, go ahead, draw the belly button to the spine, support the back with the belly as you come back up. 
And then exhale, take the feet down and bring the hips first back to midline. And then scoot them to the left. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So you're going to lift the feet, engage the belly to support the back as you move into the twist. And then once you're there, let everything soften. And again, you can turn the head any direction. Once you're here, think about massaging your core with your breath. Again, feel it expand on the inhale, soften on the exhale. And then coming back up through center. And from there, once again, bring the hips back to neutral. Bring the arms down by your sides. And then from here, when you're ready, we'll relax into Shavasana. If you want a little support under your knees, you can grab a pillow or a bolster or something. Otherwise, closing your eyes, with the palms of the hands facing up, allow your body to soften. From here, as you breathe in and out through the nose, once again, think about directing your breath into your belly. Let the belly be soft so the breath can move through it. Igniting that core work in the body is a great way to kind of bring feelings of empowerment, feelings of strength. But it's also nice to take this time to kind of let go of that need to control. Finding that sense of ease with letting go of power. And with just letting your body melt. Also sending some loving kindness to your inner being. Knowing that your experience inside your body is what matters, not the appearance of the outside of your body. just sending some love and some friendship to your belly, letting it be soft. And as always, you can pause the video or you can even just stop it here and stay in Shavasana as long as you like. Are ready to come out you can slowly wiggle fingers and toes take little circles for the wrists the ankles maybe inviting any kind of stretching into the body that feels good and then as you're ready go ahead and hug the knees into the chest gently rock side to side From there, gently roll to one side, taking a breath or two on your side. And as you're ready, making your way back up. As you come back up to seated, take just a moment to close the eyes, maybe bring the hands to the belly, and once again, just feel that softness in the belly, feel the breath dropping in. And inhale, let the hands float up overhead, palms coming to touch. Exhale, bringing the thumbs to the forehead for peaceful thoughts, to the mouth for peaceful words, to the heart for peaceful action. Om Shanti, Namaste. Well, thank you so much for doing this video with me and for exploring what true core strength can feel like. 
and I hope that you go into the rest of your day or the rest of your week with feelings of strength and empowerment, but also with that feeling of being able to relax kind of in the neck and shoulders, let the work of the body be done by more the belly, more the legs, and kind of feel that core strength from below, and then that sense of ease, relaxation, and freedom up above. And uh, stay tuned for more videos, or feel free to um, explore the other ones that I've got to offer. Have a great rest of your day. Namaste. Thanks.